Hello and welcome to another video along the Derinefland Trail. I have made a couple of videos about 3D mapping and one of the questions that arose from that was what's the point of it? There are probably several points of it, but what I want to do in this video is show you how to create a 3D model that you can print. I'm not at all an expert in that. I mean, I have some experience in 3D printing, but um, I kind of have to start from scratch here. And it's probably not the easiest method to do it, but bear with me. So I'm, I chose McGorban Church because um, if you have watched the previous videos about McGorban Graveyard, um, Thomas Armitage is buried there, who was a friend of the blind, according to his gravestone. So what I want to do is to make a 3D model, a 3D printed model of that church and graveyard for visually impaired people. I'm going to add some braille letters on it as well, hopefully. And the reason why I'm, why I'm doing this is, or the inspiration came from a visit to Waterford with a blind friend. And uh, they have a model of the Viking Triangle there. It's, I think it's bronze, probably. And she really, really liked that. And I think it's a great way to show a heritage site in 3D and to make it tactile. Even for seeing people, it's great to have that. And you can go down with your head and like get into the perspective of what it used to look like. So McGorman Church, it is already kind of 3D mapped, so that helps. And uh, you need a couple of programs for it. And I have a Windows uh, PC, so if you have something else, you might have to find your own solutions. But most of the programs, I think, are available for other systems. So first of all, you need JOSM, the editor. And then the next step you will need OSM2 World Viewer. So I'll go and open, I have JOSM already open, so I'll go into that and I will download this area here. And you just go to the download button there and zoom in on where you want to choose your area. I just have to find it now. Yeah, so there it is, and the alignment is kind of useful. There is a style here that I want to print because it is important for visually impaired people to know how to get into the graveyard. So I'll just choose, I presume they're not driving there themselves, so the driveway is not that important. I'll just choose this area and download. And this is basically the OSM file. And I will just export the whole thing or save the whole thing as an OSM file. I'm not quite sure if I could delete parts of it already. I just won't. Um, so just file, save as. And then I have my OSM files here. And this is Magorban Churchyard. And save that. And then I can close JOSM because I won't need it again. And then I have my OSM2 world viewer. And this works with OSM files. So I go to file, open OSM file. And then into my OSM files, my Gorbon churchyard. And there we have it. And um, you can already see that it has a lot of the, is it a hedge or something? here that we won't need later on, but I'll I can delete that later on. So I'll just export this now as an object file and put that in my 3D folder. Might just create a new folder and call it McGorban Church Yard and save it in that folder as well. <laughs> McGorban, just call it McGorban. And this saves it as an object file which also includes all the textures. And then I can close this program. The next step now, if you know how to use Blender, you can go with Blender for the rest of the project. I'm hopeless with Blender. I prefer SketchUp, um, but I, you need Blender for the first step. So you open Blender. They're all free programs. 
and just open a general one, delete this, uh, and then import my object file, which is under 3D, McGorbin churchyard, McGorbin object. So now we have, um, this looks a bit weird. So we, again, we have this hedge or whatever it is, and we have the tree row here. It doesn't show the trees as trees. They're just these, I don't know what you call them. Um, and it seems to have lost some of the turrets, but anyway. Um, you can already, if you can already delete parts that you think you won't need in Blender. Makes the file a bit smaller when you export. If you know how to use Blender, you can just work away with this and, and you can just export into whatever file format you need for your 3D printer. Um, probably Colada or even object file, I don't know. Um, I will export this now into a Colada file because that's what I can import into SketchUp. And same name, Gorbin. And then I use SketchUp and I have downloaded the 2017 version because you get to do a few more things. It's free. And uh, there is an online version as well, but it doesn't give you as many options. And the 2017 SketchUp version is still available. So I'm going with that. And in SketchUp, I can just import the Colada file. See, it has all the textures as well. Um, well, that's just because the last file I imported was a PNG. So I go to the Colada file here. There's only one. And just import that. And I'm, yeah, I think that that should be fine. And this is imported as a um, a group, I think, or a component. And I will probably just explode that. Maybe not. And no, edit the component and just delete some of the stuff. I won't need like all these trees here. And I might... Actually, the square is not too bad. I'll just delete everything that isn't on the square. And then in the 3D printer, we'll just print out the square. And I'll just delete everything that, as I said, that isn't on the square. And save this before I do any more changes. Save as strategy Corbin. So here we are. I have simplified the model somewhat and I've also put more details on the church. So I've taken out the tree row because you can't actually access it. And I have deleted most of the trees here. I just left um, these two, let's call them tree trunks, um, because they're pine trees and they're really large and if people walk back there and they want to feel the bark or something, um, and I might label them in that corner there. And then the next step now is that I will, oh yeah, and I also widened the walls a bit more. They're not as wide probably in real life, but because I have to scale this down now a lot, because this is one-to-one, -one, um, I want to make sure that there's still gonna be a bit of wall left um, in the 3D print. And I've also added these steps here. There's a gate here that you can't get through. The only way to get in are these steps here and they're probably steps on the back. It's only a model. Um, so we have to scale this down immensely now, as I said. Um, so I'm just gonna highlight everything and just start scaling down. And I'm gonna have to scale down way more. I think and I can always scale up if I accidentally scale it down too much. I just want to get this back roughly in the center. And 
obviously if I'm doing this for visually impaired people, um, I need to have the labels in Braille. And you can download it um, as a true font type. Um, they're all kind of called Braille. And I can't remember what the one I downloaded was called. I'll put it up on screen once I've researched that because it's somewhere in my Windows uh, settings. But anyway, you can add 3D text here under Tools, 3D text. And I've already, so here it's called Braille. Because I presume most of the people who are gonna do this are not familiar with reading Braille, you can just use a different font first and then enter the text you want to put into Braille. So I want to label this with McGorban Church, so I just type Ma or um, Church and it doesn't really matter if I use um, uppercase or lowercase and I'll just highlight all of it and then go back to Braille. And you see I downloaded three uh, Braille fonts, just, just try them out, but I figured out the size for this one. And um, I'll put on screen the the recommended height for the braille dots and also the which you use for um, here the extruded bit and then the height is the line height basically and I figured out earlier that 8.5 was working and the extrusion is 0.7 and um, if you can't type that in you might have to change your model info the see here um the precision to be able to change that so let's go back in there again so I want 8.5 and 7 millimeters and you see that you cannot see that really and that goes to show you how much more you have to scale this down I'm gonna move this to the side because you want to be able to re to see that on the model a little bit more the problem we're getting into then is of course that the 3D printer might not be able to print it as small. Just gonna take this and move it here to see how big it is. Um I guess that could roughly work. Let's just see how tiny our model is now. This is in millimeters, so it's 47 centimeters. It's not that tiny actually. By 40, that's a bit large. I'll make it a little smaller still. Because it's going to be a lot of plastic and a lot of printing. So now it's a bit bigger than A4. I'm really trying this. I've never done this before. So, whoops, what did I do? Um, also, you have to make sure that once you place your braille writing, it's not like upside down. Um, no, I can't remember what I typed there. That is actually something that I... I think there was something else I typed before. I'm confused. If I type church, shouldn't the first and the last, or oh, the first and the last, but one, A, G, O, R, B, E, N, church. See, this is weird. Or maybe there is a way to indicate capital letters. I'm so ignorant. See, now it's upside down um, because 
this letter here is a C and this letter here is a C because the first word is longer as McGovern and the other one is church. So I'm going to have to turn that around. Maybe I'll put that down here. And then you can just add as much text as you want. Uh, but what's also important is that they're not supposed to be flat. The dots, they're supposed to be domed. So what you have to do is create a little dome and then copy and paste it onto all the other dots. It's a lot of work. Um, I won't explain to you how to do that because I presume you have a bit of experience with 3D designing because otherwise the video would be eight hours long. So I have the McGarbon church in Braille here and I've also added a little tag there so I know what I put there. And of course, because it is loosely based on OpenStreetMap, we shouldn't forget to put that on it as well. Um, 3D text, not in Braille this time. That's it. Uh, Alt 0169 for the copyright sign. OpenStreetMap contributors. And I have to turn that as well. How about just 180? And then you can add as many more um, labels as you want in Braille. And what I also think would be useful is to have the footpath raised a little bit. So that's why I haven't painted it white yet. So um, the recommended height for the Braille dots is 0.7 millimeters. So that should be good for the footpaths as well, I guess. So this is what I'm going to do. Oh, point. It's not working. Six five. That's good enough. And I'll just continue that until I've done all the footpaths. Um. I'm not an expert for this and I might get a whole shitstorm now because there's an able person trying to change the world. I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to give an idea. I haven't consulted the NCBI. I don't really know how to do this. I've just googled how to get the size of the braille correctly, so I might be all wrong. Um, but it's just to give you an idea of what is possible and if you don't do it for visually impaired people, um, it might still be interesting to have a model in a school or something, you know, if you have your parish church as a 3D model or something like that. So I'll see you back when we're actually 3D printing. And here we see the 3D printer in action. It's basically just doing a really, really long spaghetti of red plastic layer on layer and layer and layer. And after only 18 hours, the model was finished. In retrospect, I would probably have done the church bigger and maybe not done the whole graveyard because the church is really tiny. Or I could have done it in two parts and glued the two parts together. I'm told that works really well with super glue. And I tried to export it to be uploaded to Shapeways, but there's something wrong with the model. So it might be easier to just export the OSM data um, relating to the footprint and maybe the footpath and so on, and then build the church or whatever. Uh, from scratch in Blender or in SketchUp and that might make the model easier to print and uh, with fewer faults in it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!